Mazda just pulled off something the automotive world thought was essentially dead and buried. In February 2024, they didn't just announce a nostalgic side project or a half-hearted tribute to their engineering past. They stood up a full department with 36 dedicated engineers and gave it one job. Bring the rotary engine back to life. Rotary engine is so different and so unique that it placed Mazda itself on the world map. And really, the rotary engine is what started this iconic love for driving, not as a concept that'll gather dust in a museum, but as real hardware with actual production intent. And the craziest part? They might actually pull it off. So why does that matter? And what exactly are they building? The return no one saw coming. On February 1st, 2024, Mazda made it official. They reinstated what they're calling the RE Development Group. And this wasn't some vague corporate announcement buried in a quarterly earnings call. This was a dedicated team with departmental status, resources, and a clear mandate. Develop modern rotary engines that can survive in today's automotive landscape. 36 engineers isn't a massive army, but it's enough to signal serious intent. For context, most automakers wouldn't bother staffing up an entire department for a niche engine type unless they had concrete plans beyond just concept cars and PR stunts. Mazda essentially told the world they're betting real money and real talent on an engine design that nearly every other manufacturer has written off as a technological dead end. The RE development group isn't working in secret either. Mazda has been surprisingly transparent about their goals. Build rotary engines that meet modern emission standards, integrate them into hybrid powertrains, and yes, make them compatible with carbon-neutral fuels. That last part is crucial because it positions rotary not as a relic, but as something that could theoretically fit into a low-carbon future. Whether that's realistic or just optimistic marketing remains to be seen. But the commitment is undeniable. To really get why this comeback is so shocking, you need to know why rotary engines vanished to begin with. The Wankel rotary engine, named after its inventor, Felix Wankel, was supposed to be the future back in the 1960s and 70s. It was compact, lightweight, had fewer moving parts than a piston engine, and could rev to the moon. Mazda, honestly, fell in love with it and became the only major automaker to mass-produce rotary-powered cars. But the rotary had problems, big ones. Fuel economy was abysmal compared to conventional engines. The design inherently burned more fuel because of its combustion chamber shape and the way the air-fuel mixture moved through the engine. Then came the oil crisis of the 1970s and suddenly thirsty engines became a liability. Emissions were even worse. Rotaries struggled to burn fuel cleanly, spewing out hydrocarbons and other pollutants that made regulators cringe. As environmental laws tightened globally, the rotary became harder and harder to justify. Mazda kept trying, refining the design through the RX-7 and eventually the RX-8. But by 2012, even they threw in the towel. The RX-8 was discontinued and the rotary engine was shelved. The world moved on to turbocharged four-cylinders, efficient diesels, and eventually hybrids and EVs. For over a decade, the rotary was essentially dead. So when Mazda announced they were bringing it back, the reaction wasn't just surprise, it was disbelief. The MX-30 range extender. Rotary's quiet comeback. Here's the thing most people missed. Mazda actually already brought the rotary back. In 2023, they launched the MX-30 eSky Active REV, a plug-in hybrid SUV that uses a tiny 830cc single rotor engine. But here's the twist. The rotary doesn't drive the wheels. It's a range extender. It sits there quietly, spinning away to generate electricity that charges the battery, which then powers the electric motor that actually moves the car. This is a fundamentally different role than what rotaries did in the RX-7 or RX-8. Instead of screaming at 9,000 RPM and guzzling gas, this little rotary runs at a steady efficient speed, acting more like a portable generator. And it turns out rotaries are actually pretty good at that job. They're compact, smooth, and, you know, when you're not asking them to deliver wild horsepower, they can be reasonably efficient. The MX-30 range extender wasn't a blockbuster sales hit, but it proved something important. Mazda could build a modern rotary that met emission standards and served a real purpose. It was a proof of concept, really just a way to test the waters and keep the engineering knowledge alive. And it laid the groundwork for what came next. The iconic SP concept, a rotary sports car, returns. In 2023, Mazda unveiled the iconic SP concept at the Japan Mobility Show. And this is where things got really interesting. This wasn't a sensible hybrid SUV, 
This was a two-seat sports car with aggressive styling, a low-slung stance, and a powertrain that made enthusiasts sit up and pay attention. A dual rotor rotary engine paired with an electric motor in a hybrid setup. Mazda claimed the iconic SP could deliver around 370 horsepower while maintaining relatively low emissions and the ability to run on carbon neutral fuels. The design itself was striking, sharp lines and a purposeful stance that screamed driver's car. But you know, concepts are cheap. Automakers roll out flashy concepts all the time that never see production. What made the iconic SP different was the language Mazda used. They didn't say this represents our vision for the future or this explores what's possible. They said they were considering production. That's a very different message. And according to recent reports, they're not kidding. Sources close to the development team say the next generation rotary powertrain for a car like the iconic SP is almost technically complete. That means the engineering work is largely done. What's left is the business case, the manufacturing plan, and the final decision on whether to actually build it. Engineering the new generation, what's actually different? So what exactly is Mazda doing differently this time? How do you take an engine design that failed on emissions and efficiency and make it work in 2025? First, they're not using the rotary as a primary power source in the traditional sense. The hybrid setup means the rotary can run at its optimal efficiency range, generating electricity rather than directly driving the wheels through a gearbox. That alone solves a lot of the old fuel consumption problems. When a rotary engine is allowed to spin at a constant efficient speed, rather than constantly accelerating and decelerating with the car. It becomes much more manageable. Second, they're engineering for carbon neutral fuels. This is critical. Even if the rotary burns fuel, if that fuel is synthesized from atmospheric carbon or derived from renewable sources like microalgae, the net emissions picture changes dramatically. Mazda is betting that carbon neutral fuels will become more available and that regulators will account for life cycle emissions, not just tailpipe emissions. That's a gamble but it's not insane. Third, emissions control technology has come a long way since 2012. Modern catalytic converters, particulate filters, and combustion management systems are far more sophisticated. Mazda claims they can meet Euro 7 and upcoming US emission standards with the new rotary designs, which would have been nearly impossible a decade ago. The dual rotor setup in the iconic SP concept is also interesting. Two rotors provide more displacement and power while maintaining the compact size and smooth operation rotaries are known for. Paired with an electric motor, the system can deliver instant torque from the electric side and high revving power from the rotary side. It's a combination that on paper at least plays to the strengths of both technologies. The development team has also been working on improving the apex seal design, one of the rotary's historical weak points. So, apex seals are the components that maintain compression in the rotary's combustion chambers. And, honestly, they've always been pretty prone to wear. But, you know, better materials and coatings could really extend engine life significantly, which would address one of the old reliability criticisms. The vision coupe and carbon neutral ambitions. In 2025, Mazda showed another concept called the vision coupe, and this one pushed the carbon neutral angle even harder. The concept reportedly features a rotary hybrid powertrain designed to run on fuels derived from microalgae, a renewable source that actually captures carbon dioxide as it grows. The messaging here is clear. Mazda wants to position the rotary not as a dirty gas guzzling relic, but as part of a sustainable future. It's a bold rebranding. Whether you buy into it or not probably depends on how you feel about synthetic fuels and alternative pathways to decarbonization. The mainstream automotive industry is betting heavily on battery electric vehicles. And there's no question that's the dominant trajectory. But Mazda is saying, yes, we'll do that too. But we're also going to explore other options. We're going to try to keep internal combustion alive in a form that can coexist with stricter environmental standards. Whether they succeed or fail, it's a fascinating experiment and other manufacturers are watching. If Mazda can make a business case for a niche, emotionally engaging product in the age of electrification, others might follow. We've already seen brands like Porsche investing in synthetic fuels for similar reasons. There's a recognition that not everyone wants to drive a silent, efficient appliance. Some people want engagement, character, and a connection to the machine. The rotary engine with its unique sound, smoothness, and high revving nature offers that in a way few other engines can. Mazda still hasn't committed to production. The iconic SP and Vision Coupe remain concepts, and the final decision on whether to build a rotary sports car hasn't been made public. 
but the fact that the engineering is almost done suggests they're close. The next few years will tell us whether this gamble pays off or whether the rotary stays in the concept car graveyard. Either way, the fact that Mazda is even trying is worth paying attention to. They're betting that passion, heritage, and clever engineering can carve out a space in a rapidly changing industry.